In this video, we're going to cover how to start a project in Floor Planner. Uh, FloorPlanner.com is a web-based architectural design program, which allows us to make uh, architectural floor plans uh, pretty easily. And the really powerful thing about Floor Planner, um, aside from being web-based, is that it also allows us to do some nice uh, interior design um, projects and produce some really great renderings uh, to showcase our design. So let's get right into it. So I'm going to switch tabs here and go to my floor planner dashboard. But before I do that, if you don't already have a floor planner account, uh, you can sign up for free if you're part of the general public. Uh, if you are a student in my class, uh, hopefully I've already given you the instructions of how to sign up for floor planner. But if not, you could still sign up for free. Shoot me an email and I will be sure to uh, add you to our educational platform so it unlocks uh, some more features uh, for the student version. So I'm gonna kick over to my other tab, go to my floor planner dashboard. And regardless of what your view may look like, your view may look a little different than mine because I'm in the educator platform. Um, but the nice thing about floor planner is there's a lot of great call to actions. It has a very bubbly interface and allows you to navigate fairly quickly. So if looking at my, my dashboard here, you'll see that if I want to create a new project, there's a great call to action, which is this nice big plus mark here. And it says great project. Now any existing projects that you may have um, in your account will show up here uh, in your dashboard as well. We'll go over how to navigate that in a, in a later video. So for right now, I want to create a new project. So I'm going to click on create project and it's going to bring me up to uh, my create project dashboard or, or where the information is. Now it's very, very important. Can't stress this enough that you name your project accordingly. Now, again, if you are a student in my class, um, I will give you the name that I'm looking for you to, to name this as your assignment. And in most click cases, it's going to be your first initial followed by your last name and then a dash and then AS for architectural projects and then a specific uh, uh, project number based on your grade and the assignment number. So for this one, I'll put 0901. Um, the rest of the information on here in most cases is going to, going to be optional. If I'm looking for you to add some more on there, I'll be sure that I put that in the project description uh, so that you can fill that out accordingly. So once that's filled out, we're going to go ahead and hit create project. It's going to think for a moment and it's going to pop up this uh, prompt uh, to start a new design. Now we have three different ways that we can start a floor plan. We can use the room wizard. We can upload an image or we can start with an empty plan. For this first assignment, we're just going to start with the room wizard. It's pretty neat. You know, it goes pretty quick, gets started really fast. So I'm going to go ahead and click on room wizard and it's going to walk me through some prompts. Now, the first prompt that it wants to ask me is, what room shape do I want? And depending on whatever you're working on is gonna, is of course gonna drive what shape that you have. So we have some options here, just a regular rectangle. We have an L shaped, we have a, a five side or a pentagon uh, uh, room shape. You get the idea. So for right now, let's say that I want to use a, my room is a T shape. Let's say that we have, how about a living room? So we have a T shaped living room. So I'm gonna click on this living room and it brings me up a sample uh, on the right hand side of my screen. And now I can rotate it and manipulate this however I want. I can mirror it horizontally, mirror it vertically. You get the idea, you can click around. You see, I'm just clicking randomly and, and things are happening, right? So don't be afraid of the software. It's, it's very fast to respond. So if you're curious of what something does, give it a try. You're not gonna hurt anything. So let's just say I'm okay with this. I want this T-shape. I'm gonna click on next. And now we could change our room dimensions. We have to tell the software how big we want our room to actually be. Now, the first thing that I noticed here is that I'm in metric, everything's in centimeters, but I wanna switch that to feet. So on the bottom left here, uh, it gives me the option to go from metric to standard. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on feet to turn everything to good old feet and inches. And now you'll see that I have a bunch of different slide bars here, sliders and some, some info boxes and also a bunch of colored arrows. Now all of these sliders correspond to the arrow. So for example, the blue slider goes with the blue arrow. The green slider goes with the green arrow. I won't insult your intelligence. You, all the, uh, the different colors go to the different color arrows. So there's a couple different ways that we can uh, change the size of our rooms. So let's say, first of all, we want to change the overall width of our room or the blue arrow or the blue slider. I can either take hold of my slider and move it left or right, make it bigger or smaller. Or if I know that say I want my room to be 25 feet wide, I could just go into my uh, my text box here and put 25 feet and hit enter. 
and it makes it 25 feet wide. And let's say I want to make it uh, 25 in the green direction as well. Again, I could use my slider. I could hit the plus mark or minus uh, options on my uh, text box here, or I could just go in and pop in my dimension. Okay, and so now you, you can do this for every single one of these elements. So you can uh, completely redefine uh, all the dimensions of the space that you're going to create. So for now, let's assume this is good. We're happy with this. I'm gonna click on next. And now we have an option to give it a room type. Okay, now we could choose between the living room, dining room, kitchen. And you're gonna notice that once I click on a type of room, not a lot happens, right? So right now I, I said I wanted to make this a living room. So I'm gonna click on living room and it didn't do anything, right? Now if I click on dining room, it just changes the color, it doesn't do much. But in the background in the software, it's doing some stuff, it's loading some stuff up for us. Um, so even though it doesn't look like much from the service right now, it'll come into play later on. So I'm gonna click on living room and click on next. And now it's gonna ask me if I want to apply a room style, meaning what type of interior design do I want my room to represent? So the top option is just an empty room, right? There's no, there's no preloaded interior designs or colors or furniture elements or anything that's gonna drive our end result. But if I go down, you'll see that there's a, a design called Audrey, one of the basics, black, yellow, gravel, or black, yellow, and gray, excuse me. And there's one, let's find one. I think there's a country one here. Let's see if we can't find the country. Yeah, country. So let's click on the country theme. That's a very common theme that we're all familiar with. And you'll notice again, not much happened except for my floor changed uh, to this, this you know, white wood type looking floor. So it doesn't look like much to the surface, but a lot happened in the background. It loaded some different furniture elements in for us. And we'll see that in a moment. So while I'm at it in this, in this view, you'll notice that up on the top right of, of our box here, we have a couple different views that we can, that we can look into. And clicking on these different views gives us different looks, okay? And this, these three icons are gonna carry out uh, throughout our, our, uh, our design, and we can toggle between all of these. And once we get a little further into our design, we'll see what those do. So I just wanted to call out what those were. Um, and again, if you're curious about something, click on it, check it out, you're not gonna hurt anything. So I'm all set with my room style, so I'm gonna click on next. And this is the great feature of Floor Planner. They have this awesome feature called Magic Layout. So traditionally, if you're if you're drawing a floor plan or creating a room, you have to first create the room and, and dimension it and, and, and get you know the overall size the way you want, put the windows where you want, that type of thing. And then you have to go into the task of actually placing in your furniture. So for a living room, you'd have a, a sofa, some end tables, a coffee table, um, lamps, plantings, uh, you know, electronics, all these different uh, features that you have to bring into your floor, your floor plan to create that interior design. Now, what Magic Layout allows you to do is literally by the click of a button, imports a lot of the stuff that you're gonna get, that you're gonna want in a living room because we've already told it that we want it to be a living room. So I'm gonna click on Magic Layout and watch what happens. I just clicked it once. It's gonna think and it automatically puts in some stuff that I may want in my living room. So a rug, a sofa, looks like a little love seat, some, some plants and whatnot, and TV on a, on a stand of some sort. But let's say, it, you know, my vision of this living room never had the TV in this right-hand corner. I don't want this. I want to try a different layout. I can click Magic Layout again, and it's going to change. Say, okay, you don't want stuff over there? I'll put it over here. Well, maybe I don't want it there either. Well, I'm going to click Magic Layout again. And I can keep on clicking Magic Layout. And every time I do that, it's going to change some elements in my design to give me a baseline uh, of the interior design elements as we go forward. So let's assume that this is okay. This is how I want. I'm happy with this as a start. And I'm going to go ahead and click on Start. And it brings up my floor plan. Now, we have a couple different views. First of all, this is our 2D view or 2D dimensional view, our, our bird's eye view of our plan. And we can in this plan, select objects and we can move them around and we can manipulate things and kind of check out you know, where things are and, and just literally point and click and drag and things around to, to make the floor plan more to what we want. Now we could also easily switch this over into a three dimensional view. So for example, like I have no idea what, I'm assuming this is a lamp on top of a, of a uh, like a coffee table here or an end table, but I don't really know what that looks like. So to do that, I'm gonna go up to the top right and I'm gonna click on the 3D icon. 
And once I do that, it brings me into 3D view. And I have two different 3D views. Now, the first view is like an orbit around view or, or a, uh, an aerial view. And if I left click and hold inside of my room, I can now manipulate and move around and see my elements a little closer. And if I scroll in with my middle mouse wheel, I can get real close and really take a look at what's going on. So I do see that I have a lamp here. Looks like a, like a, a funky uh, design, maybe like a wood lamp. And I see that it has some fruit bowls and you know some teacups and, and different design elements, which I couldn't see in my 2D view. Now I can easily toggle back and forth in between my 2D and 3D view, which is pretty exciting. So as you can see in a few short moments, we're able to uh, create uh, a new project, create a room, define our room sizing and dimensions, apply uh, uh, an interior design style and using magic layout, we were able to create a quick, easy layout and switch in between our 2D and 3D view. So for that, I'm gonna end this video there. And the next video, I'm gonna show you how to manipulate the objects a little more. Also how to add in some uh, more rooms and how to add dimensions to those interior rooms.